What's up guys, my name is Krona, and today I'm gonna show you how to properly vocode in Logic Pro X. I'm gonna cover some of the things that I think have been incomplete or wrong about a lot of other tutorials out there, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to come off with a better understanding of how vocoding works fundamentally. Now, let's just jump right in. Right here I have uh, a pre-recorded sound, uh, just the beginning of Emotion Heap's hide and seek and some chords to go with it. Uh, nothing fancy going on here, but I'm just gonna play it so you can understand what the bass sound sounds like. Where are we? What the hell is going on? Like I said, super basic, no real editing on the on the audio, and it's just an electric keyboard, but that's not what you're here for. So First, I'm going to go through what most people show you to do so you can at least understand that. And then I'm going to show you what they miss and how to do it better. So what most people do is they'll open up a new instrument. They'll come into their instruments and they'll open up Evoc 20 PS, which is the vocoder synth. And this is basically the standard uh, of the, at least on the YouTube tutorials of how to get this done. Now, in order to understand this, what they oftentimes will do is they'll come in and they'll say, hey, you need to open up the vintage vocoder presets, come to clear voice vocoder, and then set your sidechain to whatever input it is that you want. And that works. And I'll actually show you, if I move the chords that I played before onto this track, uh, we can now see that it actually does work. And let's just play it now. Where are we? What the is So that's fine. It sounds very robotic. It doesn't really sound like a lot of other sounds out there. It's not necessarily the type of sound you're going for, but everyone has their preference. But there's a lot that you miss if you do it this way, and you're not really gonna understand exactly what it is that's going on. Um, so like I said, you can do that. That's the quick and dirty way. But if you wanna have real control over the sound, you're gonna need to do a little bit more. But first, let's just talk about the fundamentals of vocoding and go over what you need to understand there. Uh, at its core, you're gonna have an input synth that comes in, and then you're gonna have an input audio that gets analyzed and placed over that synth. And using all kinds of crazy magical math that you don't need to worry about, uh, the output is that classic vocoding sound that sounds like a robot human or whatever it is. And so you need to understand both of those aspects if you wanna get the best sound out of your vocoder. Now, one of the reasons that using this Evox synth is such a poor way to do it is because the synthesizer itself is, in my opinion, pretty limited and not particularly good sounding. And so you're limiting yourself to only the types of sounds that it can produce. And that's not necessarily what you have to do. Uh, so instead, I'm gonna quickly show you a better way and then I'm gonna talk about all the different ways that you can change it to make it you know, the sound that you're looking for. So we're not going to need this anymore. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new software instrument. This can be literally anything. I'm going to use Alchemy for the sake of the example. If you wanted to, you could use Serum, literally any synth at all. It doesn't matter. Pick something that you're comfortable with, especially if you're just learning. We're going to open that up. Now, Alchemy's core patch is uh, just a you know an 80s synth or whatever. Uh, I'm just going to initialize a preset. You don't need to worry about that. Now we have a, the world's most basic sawtooth, and I'm actually gonna even make it even more basic. Here we go. Right? The most basic synthesizer sound that I can think of. Now, that's actually all we need on this front for now. Obviously, we're not vocoding yet, but what you can do, and this is actually one of the coolest things about the Evoc plug, is there's a, a plugin called Evoc 20 Track Oscillator. Now, if you go into filter, that's where you can find it originally. And we open that up and we'll see, we have an interface that looks very similar to the synth that we were using before. The only difference here is that this is not a synth. This is actually just the vocoder aspect. So this you can put onto any track and you can feed it any audio and it's gonna have the same kind of effect uh, as we did on the other track, except now you have complete control over the synthesizer input. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. But first, let's get over the basics of this. What you're gonna wanna do to make this function the way that you intended to 
is you're going to want to take this analysis in and set it to sidechain, which means that the input's going to be coming from your sidechain. You're going to want to set your sidechain to audio one or whatever your input audio is supposed to be in this case. Right? These are my vocals, obviously. Uh, we also want to make sure that this is set to voc. It is by default. I, if it isn't for you, make sure it's set there. And that's actually it. Now, if we take this MIDI information and we put it over, right? Well, first of all, let's just delete it so you hear what it sounds like real quick. Wow, that's intense. So let's not do that. But <laughs> if, you, uh, if you turn it on now, you'll see that it takes that type of sound and we're going to have a, probably a pretty decent vocode sound coming out of it. Where are we? What is right, so even at its default, we're actually already hearing a much better sound, and that's actually just because of the quality of the synthesizer input. Right, we're just using a basic sawtooth here. We're not really doing anything crazy. Um, but there's a lot more that we can do. So let's talk about the vocoder and then let's talk about the synth. And, and then I think you should have all the tools that you need to move on. There's a few things here that you need to think about. And I think it's helpful to understand what a vocoder basically does. If you look at this middle input here, you have this little panel that is the display and it shows you a, a approximation of what the vocoder is doing. And at the top, you have these bands. And at the bottom, they obviously reflect the same bands. Now what these bands are representing is the frequency range that it's going to be analyzing on your input audio source. So in this case, we have 10 bands and they're going from the range 80 hertz to 8,000 hertz, both of which can be moved. And as you see, as we move it, it changes where the, uh, where the bands represent on the spectrum. Now if we take the bands number, we can increase it or decrease it. And that will also reflect uh, the analyzation that's done right here at the beginning. Now you also have these dials down here, and if you change them, you know, you can change the shape of the output. And this is basically all that, all that analysis that's done here is then going to get translated onto whatever synthesizer you're using. In this case, it's just these chords, right? And it's going to stimulate frequencies from those ranges. So the smaller it is, you know, the smaller the sound will be, the bigger it is, the wider the sound will be, uh, the more frequency it's going to cover. So. Now I'm just going to show you a few examples so you can understand exactly what all these different things do. And we're just going to put this on a quick loop. So if we, if we increase the bands or decrease the bands, you're going to hear the quality of the input from the vocoder going up and down. The more bands you have, the more clear it's, and human it's going to sound, the less, the more robotic it's going to sound. We'll start at five. We'll start at eight because five is too loud. So now you kind of understand how the bands affect it. The, the more you have, the clearer it's gonna be. There's obviously other effects of that, but that's the basic gist of it. You can also change the frequencies and that'll you know, depending on the input sound, change the output. You can just mess around with that and you'll find the sound that you're looking for. But another important thing to do is understand how form and stretch and shift work. Resonance, less so. Uh, basically, form and stretch takes the output, whatever these bands are, I'm gonna turn this down just to have a little bit clear idea of it. Uh, and form and stretch, so we can see right now it's pretty basic what you're, what you're analyzing on the audio input is going right to the synthesizer as is. But if we stretch it out, you can see it gets wider, and that's actually reflective of the frequency spectrum. So now it's gonna be stimulating more of the input. And as I shift it around, you'll see exactly how that comes out in the output. Right. So now you see, you can, you can make it very thin, you can make it very wide, it just depends on what you're going for. Every song is gonna have a different feel to it. Another thing you need to understand is the form and shift. Without, move, without changing how wide apart these bands are, you can change where in the frequency spectrum they're gonna be. And now because we're using a sawtooth as our input, right, we have a lot of frequency to work with. So you'll see exactly how that sounds.
and you know resonance that's resonance you can you can mess with that if you want there's other things that you can deal with here uh, including the attack and release uh, that is on the vocoder sound so you know obviously a short attack is gonna hit it instantly and a long attack it might kind of fade in a little bit and release the same thing on the output so you can mess around with those as well uh, but that's basically all you really need to know uh, in order to get what you're looking for on the vocoder sound. Now let's move on to the synthesizer sound. Right? Like I said, we're using a basic sawtooth you can get out of most. Um, but what you do to the input sound is going to drastically affect the output sound. So if you're looking for something super bright, you're going to want to have a, a bright synthesizer to go with it. If you're looking for something super ambient and, and flowy, then you're going to also want to reflect that in your synthesizer. So what I'm going to mess with here just to demonstrate this is you know, when you build a super saw, you stack a bunch of sawtooths on next to each other and they're all detuned a little bit and it gives it this really wide sound. And you can actually reflect the same thing in the output of the vocoder. And we're going to hear what that sounds like now. So as you can see, the more the more destructive the interference becomes as it would be just with a normal stacked sawtooth. Uh, here you kind of get the same effect, but it's on the vocoder sound. So ultimately what that means is, as you change your input sound, you're gonna, it's gonna reflect the taste of your output sound. So if I were to switch it just from a simple saw to a simple square, right, we're gonna kind of hear that more candied sound that you're used to with a square. <laughs> Right, and that's basically all you really need to know. Uh, if you're looking for a very specific sound, you want to try and understand what it sounds most similar to. And then you can build out both, you know, the type of vocoding that you're going to need on your audio input and the type of bass synth that it's going to need to represent and reflect that sound. And with those two aspects, I think you're going to be able to create some really cool stuff out there. But yeah, that's, uh, that's basically all you're really going to need to know in order to you know, achieve and morph or create whatever sound it is that you're looking for out of your vocoder. Uh, there's not really much else that you need to worry about. You can get into a little more advanced stuff, but it's really ultimately not going to change the, the overall aspect too much. These are really the biggest aspects that reflect the output sound. So hopefully you found this video interesting, hopefully you've learned something, and uh, hopefully you'll come back for more as I continue to push these videos out. I'm intending to uh, jump into making some more tutorials and also maybe breakdowns of how I create some of the sounds in my songs and you know I, I firmly believe that sharing this type of information is, is a good thing so anyway if you like this video comment it rate subscribe do whatever you got to do uh, if you didn't maybe leave some feedback tell me how I can improve I'd really appreciate it and uh, I'll see you around next time